Hello everyone, I think we are live. Just give me a second. Hello everyone, please drop a message once you join, uh, let me know if my voice is clear. So today we will be actually doing a case study, just let me know once you all join, Meanwhile, let me set a few things. Hi Karthik, hi Prithvi, a very good morning, good morning Divya. Uh, so everyone just let me know if my voice is audible uh, it should be clear as well as i hope you are able to see if anything i'm drawing here right so let us go and explore courses we are also celebrating women's day discount so please check out our courses if you're interested to buy one meanwhile just let me know in the comments if everything is fine and we will begin in just four or five minutes so yeah Thanks, Prithvi. Everyone else, can I get a yes if my voice is clear? Mm. Great, I think we should be fine. And I hope my like overall the setup is fine, right? With respect to technical things, I hope we are fine. So anything which I'm drawing here. Great, I think we should be good to begin. Meanwhile, if anyone has any doubts, I see the people, people are still joining. So if anyone has any doubt, please, please feel free to ask them in the comments. People, people. Yep, should be fine, I think. Yeah, some great. Uh, great. So I think, yeah, people still joining. I see the count increasing. Meanwhile, if anyone has any doubts from the last classes which we have discussed, please ask them. So today we will be doing a case study. Of course, it will be an industry level which you can get in your projects in any company or something. Okay. So I have actually made sure that I'm coming two, three cases so that you get an overall idea instead of just going, taking a project and then going through it. I will be explaining from my professional journey as well that what are the challenges which you can face. Okay, and overall, what other things basically might be required to make sure that when you actually take a project, okay, you should be able to basically complete it and do it in a very nice way. So as to make sure that, you know, uh, whenever you are in a company or whenever you're presenting it to someone, he gets an overall just that, yeah, you have an idea. Just one disclaimer. So we have studied all the stats and everything, but you will still see that how 60-70% of that is helpful and the rest 30-40% is based on our practice. And the way we basically take our problems in real life, because 
the way we actually communicate and understand the data, that is something which you have to transform for our machines, okay? Meanwhile, if anyone has any doubt, please feel free to ask them in the comments. I'm waiting till others join because today is an important class for anyone who would like to actually read and understand about this. So, yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, okay. Okay, see the count is 11 now. Let us wait. Uh, anyone any doubt till now? Whatever we have studied or with respect to anything with respect to data science or machine learning in general? Let me know if any doubt is there. Okay, I think okay, it is 16 now. No worries, uh, let us actually begin. Please let me know if you have any thoughts. So, let me actually start uh, with the basic overall walkthrough on the platform and everything. And meanwhile, people will join, so we will be good to begin then, okay? So, yeah. Uh, I think I have covered this a lot, but if anyone is joining for the very first time, uh, you are watching me either on the, like most of you are watching on the Iron Challenge uh, channel only, so where we are going live and doing this case, uh, community class. So I have personally done two community class, one on the data science and another on the machine learning, okay? So once you complete this thing, uh, this class basically, today, uh, like, after today's class, uh, hopefully it will be completed the case study. If not, uh, maybe we will just take tomorrow's day as well. Okay, maybe one, one and a half hour. But yeah, once we complete this thing, then you should be good to start the machine learning community class. Okay, so doing both of these community class will give you a very good idea on what exactly data science and machine learning is. And then you are very, I would say at a very good base to even include that in your CV, include any projects or case study basically, which we have covered. And as well as move to, I would say, uh, advanced level of that, okay, advanced machine learning or deep learning algorithms, okay. So, this is a platform, uh, make sure to check us out at tinyron.ai, uh, you can search about the same on Google so that you will get the website. Then to take this particular course, uh, so we are also running other comedy classes as you are aware, so should be, please feel free to check them out, okay, a lot of them are free and that would be a very good starting point if you want to start anything, okay. Then just search by my name and there is the data science foundation. Now, this is free as you can see. Now, why I am always uh, pressure, like I would say, pushing you and nudging you to join from here is that once you join from here, you will be able to track your progress and also provide you with a certificate once you 100% complete this course, okay? So, what you have to do, you have to just enroll now from here. So, for all the other community classes as well, make sure that you enroll now from here. I am already enrolled, so it will just ask me to log in. You have to sign up maybe if you are new to any platform. Then, once you enroll, uh, this is the data science foundation one. Okay. So you will see all the videos. Okay. You will actually see all the videos. So what we have taken along with quizzes and assignment. So till now actually we have done. Yeah. Till day five, PDA to every video is, is available. Uh, today we are starting with a case study. Most probably this will be the last thing which we will be covering. So today I will try to complete it as we will take tomorrow's day as well. But yeah, this is what we intend to cover today. Uh, make sure that you, cl you can take classes from here. You won't get any distraction or I would say video references from YouTube. Amazing recommendation engine. To avoid that and to actually study, let us use this. So that should all be, I think, pretty good. Then there is another way you can actually just... Uh, one second, my bad. Another way to take our courses is that you can go on iNeuron. 
you get any your intelligence and basically here you can see that live classes we are taking so here you can join it like this also okay so i hope this thing is clear as well to each and every one of you there were to be a little delay i think so the way i am seeing but yeah these are the two ways live classes you can take from youtube and for previous classes or for assignment and quizzes and for a certificate please make sure to check out our website and enroll there okay so let me actually start with today's main agenda that is a feature engineering basically and the eda part so let me take if any questions are there so i had a doubt i can able to identify the data whether super or super i had a doubt from model section which use case to fit for i know uh prithvi see what happen is that i will actually cover this thing in today's class as well once you identify that what problem of yours is normally we deal with the classification or regression problem right okay first you have to make sure that you spend the time to clean and basically make your data ready so let me write it like this data ready okay then how the use case for your i would say basically model selection occur is that we idly try to apply more and more models because it is pretty straight forward to apply models but if it is not possible then we actually try to understand the data for example let's say if most variables are categorical okay let me remove it from here yeah so let's say if most variables are categorical then naive bayes is a very good algorithm okay if we are dealing with a lots of i would say numerical variable or variable where you see that some kind of uh, overall conditions can be made okay let's say in your uh, eda you got to know that for the example we will see in the house browsing that how a number of uh, bedrooms number of let's say bathrooms they have a play right so in this what happen is that you can get actually an if kind of a condition let's say if houses bathroom is greater than 3 and something like this then this can be less than 3 if you get in your eda basically you will get to know about this okay when you will do a lot of i would say spend a lot of time on your data you will get to understand on this then you are pretty sure that maybe decision tree machi or let's say random forest can be a good algorithm okay random forest are the good algorithm if let's say it contains a lot of i would say your a uh, numerical variable and there is some you feel that there might be some uh, i would say connection between the dependent and dependent variable so what i mean by connection let's say something like this is happening m1 x1 then let's say m2 x2 and lot of maybe this kind of very complex thing is there okay then what we you will do is then basically we will finalize that maybe neural networks can be used okay so the model selection and application always and always depend on which kind of data you are dealing with okay if we have a lots of features then maybe we will do pca first that is principal component analysis and then maybe we can try to see that if svd or svr those kind of algorithms can be applied or something can be done there okay if a lots of algorithms if a lots of columns are there okay if lots of columns are there then pca becomes a choice first to basically reduce the overall i would say dimensionality of the data and then basically work on the same right so the best way first is to understand your model or uh, sorry your data and then apply your model based on the understanding which you have and then see okay which is doing better which is not and normally what will happen what i have seen in my experience is that certain based on problem okay based on particular problem certain kind of uh, models or i would say family of model for example these are your all tree algorithms right based on tree or based on conditions okay the other one is your statistical model these uh, your linear regression or logistic regression then naive bayes is your probabilistic model okay then there are ensemble model as well okay so what i have seen is as one family of your particular model will basically do very good okay as compared to other family because somewhere some hidden pattern with respect to stats probability or something would be there in the data okay which our model will be able to extract now once you are able to get that then it makes a lot of sense to see that okay what other algorithm in the same space you can apply so for example we see that linear regression is basically doing us very good then we can basically try regularization l1 and l2 regularization to maybe see that we can reduce overfitting okay we can try to come up with some other insights we can have some feature importance which basically can be added so all these things are basically i would say uh, basically hit and trial kind of thing which we uh, try in real life majorly to come up with what is the best model okay uh prithvi i hope your question was answered can i get a quick yes in the comment if everything is clear anyone else if you have any doubts please feel free to ask them so this was the question of uh, prithvi so as to make sure 
great prithvi and i will suggest one more thing i will be taking few other community classes as well and everything so please be with me and the thing which i will basically share with you right based on my experience especially in the industry that will be a lot helpful see the thing is that right now even i will say that that whatever we are studying right that is 60 70% of what actually we will be using there is no i would say fixed steps that you have to do this it is always a lot of hit and trials okay you have to the more you will do it the more projects you do the more understanding you will get okay uh great so i think we can begin with the same just before beginning i would like to quickly uh just discuss that all the things which you have covered quickly once again so we started with statistics okay of course backbone of data science very important okay one must understand although i hope uh everything which i have covered till now that was clear right in the i have make sure that the language is pretty easy and you know i have just covered them as much as they are required okay because if let's say you know that now what covariance and correlation is if any other thing someone is using you should be able to come out uh, basically get uh, what exactly that is okay so your statistics we covered about mode okay one second yeah on statistic we covered about mode median mean so mean median mode basically then we covered about your variance and standard deviation so these are your overall a uh, central tendency measure and these are central uh, dispersion measures okay so i hope each and everyone if you remember this then for two variables we understood that what covariance and correlation is and why one is beneficial while other might not be that much but yeah it is still makes sense to basically get an idea on what both are okay so covariance and correlation so along with that we also covered all the jargons of your statistics population sample all these things okay so that is of course very important to understand because if you are talking between data scientist then it makes sense to use those jargons only okay like it will be a lot uh, helpful to make sure that you are using those jargons and they are heavy uh, they are like basically something which you are connecting with so other per person also think that you have an idea okay then what we next covered was about hypothesis testing we took like had a little idea on the same i will be covering this in the further class this has to be actually taught like your maths concept but it is of course very important with interview point of view as well so we'll cover this uh, separately but hypothesis testing is something which we saw where we took some example then how we understood that okay if this is your population and this is your sample then how basically we come around them okay once this was done then we basically moved forward then we moved forward to see what are the different kind of eda like we also of course discussed the crisp tm and big data methodology so let me write them as well and i actually use crisp pm a lot because i think this is very intuitive like let's start first with business instead of data or your any technical thing which does makes a lot of sense okay then we saw that how we have to do missing value okay then how we have to handle outliers then how we can actually handle different kind of variables different variables type and we also saw that how different sampling techniques are there okay along with that we also saw that normalization and your normalization slash standardization to basically get your data through okay what all we discussed apart from this and then basically all the different kind of data types and how to handle them okay so i hope each and everyone if you have the basic idea on what all we have covered okay can i get a quick yes if all things are clear so that we can move forward on the same great thanks divya thanks shalmeli so yeah i think we can now start and let us go back to our overall code so actually let me just also zoom this a little bit in i hope this is clear now can i get a yes or no if this thing is clear what you are seeing on my screen 
Please let me know if this is visible. What I'm trying to show, or if I have to zoom in more. Of course, the code should be very clear to you, so that you get an overall idea what is happening. Great. I hope everyone is able to see the code. That should be helpful. Nice. So, uh, I will actually. What we will be doing today is I have actually uh, shortlisted few problems. Okay, and we will be doing. Uh, our analysis, cleaning, and everything on those problems in steps. So we will first take up house pricing data set, a very important data set, and everything. Uh, normally, a lot of concepts are taught using this data set. It is present like one is present on Kegel, then Boston data set is also present in your SkyKillern and other libraries as well. Okay, so we will get the data, and along with you, I will also ask that okay, what thing you see that you know something which is better in that in your data and everything, and then. We will take two, three data sets. The reason being is I want to cover more and more types of problems. Okay, so this is a regression problem. Okay, we will not be applying model or anything. Let us not go into that because we have not studied till that. But of course, data science and feature engineering and EDA, all these also have a very good, I would say, uh, importance, and that has to be done first before applying your model. Okay, so I hope all of you are clear with this as well. So now, actually, let us move forward. Okay, so we will actually perform the below things: handling missing values, temporal variables. We will see what they are. Categorical variables. Okay, rare variables and everything. So, what do I mean by rare variables? Is that let's say, a uh, student, teacher, and parent. These are some data. Okay, which we have labeled. Okay, now it can happen that let's say sixty percent is student, thirty nine. 0.9% is basically your teacher and 1% like in a school data I'm saying then 0.1% or somewhere is basically around which your parents data lies now of course this label is kind of something which we don't which we might not have to deal with okay so we will be seeing that if we can remove this or not and then standardizing values of the variable to arrange to basically same range so this all we saw also that right standardization is required uh, before uh, moving forward I asked yesterday a question that what is the issue if I make change like this in our model? If I basically, so let's say my gender is there. Okay, say age is there. Say qualification is there. And then let's say income is there. Income is my dependent variable. Now, if in this variable M and F, what if I change it to 1 and 0? What is the problem? Have anyone spent the time to basically work on the same? Can I get an answer if anyone has any uh, any idea on the same? This was something which we discussed right yesterday. Anyone has an idea about will be the case if this happens? Shikandip is asking what is temporal variable? We will see the same. Divya, majorly temporal variables are the variables which let's say deal with your time and everything. So let's say if it is given three days, five hours, then AM, PM is given. Okay. If let's say distance or the time taken is given, so we have to handle them in a nice way, right? So that we can be sure. Anyone else who has an idea that what will be the case here? Should be straightforward, pretty. I would say like it is very easy to check also. Like there is some uh, library also which we do to handle cases so that this doesn't one hot encoding or something if you have heard of it. Okay, let me tell you what exactly will be the issue. Let us go to the board. Okay, because this is of course a very important concept again. Now what we took was that we have gender. Second, we have our gender. We have our age. We have our qualification. And we have our income let's say which is a dependent variable okay let's say all of these are somehow numerical variable only and in gender we are having male and female okay now if all of you remember qualitative variables we studied two type right 
So in qualitative variables, one was ordinal and one was purely categorical. So in ordinal, there was a basically levels or I would say the variable like let's say high, medium, low, something like this was happening, right? Something like this was happening where there was an order between the categories. Okay. So now what happened is that if you will change your males to one and female to zero here, then there will be an issue. The issue will be that your model, whenever model or whatever model you are using, okay, let's say whatever model which you are using, that will basically feel that one is basically superior than your zero, okay? Something like this will happen where it will think that one is superior than your zero. This would have been fine if we let's say do the same in qualification where let's say qualifications are something like say high school, graduate, undergraduate and PhD. Here it seems fine if I allow PhD as 4, undergraduate let's say as 2, graduate as 3 and high school as 1. Because there is an inherent level where PhD is ideally in a normal way, basically it is greater than your uh, high school student, right? But if we do the same thing here, we are, let me just use it. Yeah, we are in a way telling our model that let's say one is greater than zero or male is greater than female or vice versa. Okay, so something like this will be happening. Okay, I hope this thing is clear till now. Can I get a quick yes or no from everyone? If this thing, what I just explained is clear or not. And this will be true like if let's say you take one uh, like uh, anything as 0 or 1, okay? If the order, ordering is not there in the category, then this thing doesn't hold true, right? Everyone else, is this thing clear? Can I get a quick yes or no? Okay. So now how will we deal with it? Anyone has an idea? Yes, there were one hot encoding, then you should have seen the same as well. So what we will do is, let me actually clear all this thing here. There's a library as well, and we can do that by ourselves as well. What we will do is, we will actually convert our variable in a way, where let's say this is red. So gender underscore male and gender underscore female, okay? So if we see here, it will be 1, 0, 1, 0. Similarly, here it will become 0, 1, 0, 1. What I have done? So where male was there, I choose 1 in gender male. Okay, and for female or any other any other type, I will choose 0. Okay, similarly for male, uh, let's say in this case, if female was there, then I choose 1 for female. And in other case, I choose 0. There can be other... I would say genders as well, okay, if let's say not specified or if it was based or any other gender as well, okay. So we will be able to handle the same, it will be zero. And I know that like I will share what I felt the first time I learned about it that won't it become a lot heavy for my model that let's say uh, basically if we are sending these many variables, but that is not the case, our model is able to handle the same, okay. It is rather able to handle that better. Okay, and we don't get a case where, let's say, ordering gets introduced into our categorical variables, okay? So that they can have an effect, right? Is everyone clear with this thing? Can I get a yes or no? Meanwhile, let me see your comments. And if anything is not clear, please write in the comments. Income is not dependent on gender. Can we drop? Uh, Praveen, that is actually not the case. So two things. First thing is income is anyway your uh, target variable, okay? So anything in your ED and everything, we will be dropping it. And you cannot say by... Uh, I would say that if income is dependent on gender or not, right? A lot of reports actually in today's world shows that unfortunately still gender plays a role in, in your income and everything, okay? So I shared, I basically had this thing discussed when we were 
doing a case study in ml as well that you should kind of uh, be like a, i would say a dumb child where you are inferring uh, like all the information from the data not from your outside world or anything you can use the outside data that thing still works okay but don't let your uh, i would say your thinking or your prejudice come inside the data for example it can very well happen that in this particular data let's say if we are given any data okay your females gender basically has somewhere where the income is high so if that is not the case in real world you should not care about that okay you should see if you can include something that why is that the case to basically i would say enhance your data but if your let's say data is given from a particular use case or something then you should not basically focus on making that right based on your understanding okay everyone is this clear can i get a yes or no Okay, great. I mean, uh, Divya, this is the one hot encoding only, na? Which I did just. What else you understand by one hot encoding? Divya, I hope this thing is clear. and overall let's like you can go to name and this is all dot one hotting coding it but i think you understand the overall intuition and idea about this right for our model when how it will be better and this actually is one hotting coding only right uh, i hope you are not confused till that what exactly one hotting coding is and the other case it's very important to get this thing clear matlab i don't want that you see two things are there first is that Okay, I understand that. Uh, of course, you should know the names and everything. But overall, I have seen few data scientists which are actually they are able to make very good decisions even if they are not aware about the names and everything, right? So first, let me know if you understood this thing. Then we will actually also we can together see what overall encoding is. Okay, let me actually just see and check that in front of you only. So that would also clear this up. If what we are doing is overall encoding or not, let me go to the. Actually, okay. So let us maybe check one hot encoder in your SkyKidLearn overall. See if they have given any example. Kindly, they do give an example. So see, male one, female three, female two. Okay, they are doing something like this, where they are fitting it. Uh, one second. Let me try. Let me take this example. So what is happening here is that see. Categorical value of fruit was one, two, and three. Okay, here the issue would have been that overall we would have introduced some, I would say, prejudices that uh, let's say orange is superior than the other two. So what we do is apple, mango, and orange. Okay, I hope this thing is clear, Devya. So similarly, if you see uh, this example is also there, we can change the gender. and of course also makes sense to change the remarks or remarks can actually we will see that grade can be 2 so it is basically if it is very best then it is 5 right or let's say excellent so we have the category na poor worse poor good grade then best so basically 1 to 5 star 5 uh, star rating we can basically come up with okay so i hope this thing is clear to each and every one of you temporal variables also we have already told we will see the same as well now let me remove and basically start with our uh case study quickly so here we have taken the house pricing data set okay now what is happening in this house pricing data set let me first explain each and everything to you uh normally import is the very first thing which we do import numpy panda matplotlib matplotlib in line why is this used can anyone tell me why matplotlib in line is used and this is basically pd panda set option display max column So this is so that we can visualize all the columns in our data frame. Okay. Why is matplotlib inline used? Can anyone tell me? 
so then we have the data i will be sharing the code as well the data with you so you should be good to basically practice and basically include this as one of your project okay sorry my bad i had to remove this but no worries uh let's go back yeah great so here we are just seeding the data did csv data set head let me run this as well so data should be in the same directory if you will see here the data is present here let us see the data also once okay so i think it has a lots of column i think around 81 85 columns are there so the main column is your sale price okay where we are basically calculating the price no the way that is not the case if we are using matplotlib in line we will get the graphs in line only it won't be opening in a separate tab or somewhere so you can see all your graphs in line only okay hello anand good morning uh, i don't get notification of a live class and missing a lot of classes uh, no worry anand i will highly suggest you to just see the recordings uh, i will check with the team advice that the case idly uh, i think you should subscribe to the channel and i think uh, in the i learn you will get those notification right for the live class how it happens we'll still uh, check with the team months okay so that should be fine so everyone like okay i have to okay see purpose of map dot lib inline so you can just understand if anything is not there please google like that i think is the biggest skill where you are able to find the solution yourself as well okay so if any code is given to you try to understand that with the help of your own knowledge as well as your uh, internet and everything okay so like if you don't like see this is if we don't write our graph the graph will be opening in a new window altogether okay if we don't use matplotlib in line but if we use matplotlib in line then we will see the graph like this inside our notebook okay i hope each and every one of you are clear with this of course very important function we don't want that it is uh, one second okay let me run the first line so it is saying pd was not defined panda we haven't exported and now basically using this panda set option display max column we were able to also see the same i hope each and every one of you is clear on what exactly matplotlib all the libraries and everything whatever we have imported okay and then we are now uh, basically i would say loaded the data okay now we will see the data shape it is 146081 okay 1460 rows 81 column of course this is a very i would say heavy data because we have 81 columns to deal with okay let us see some of the columns to get an idea let us see what all column we can understand we have the id that makes sense uh, each house might be having an idea then lot frontage i think this is how much a uh, lot basically is for the front area then lot area okay then which street is basically going on then alley is present or not i see most of them are na so we might have to deal with them Uh, lot shape is there regular ir one or something land counter then utilities all pub and everything lot config land slope neighborhood which neighborhood is it part of then few conditions condition one and two i see most of them are norm some is coming as this one then building time it is a duplex it is one family okay town something basically we might have to see then house style one story two story five unit what all is there then overall quality i think this might be something which is basically they are using overall condition maybe the condition so seems like this is your numerical variable only if high then condition would be higher year built okay year remo remodified so maybe let's say we can calculate the age of the house okay we can calculate till it for last change or basically last modified so all these things also we will be able to calculate then roof style how does the roof style then roof material okay exterior first exterior second all these things okay i think there are lots of variable but i hope you get the idea that what all basically it has right basement has all the variables for basement so this is basically the data where all the details of a particular house is present and this is very important like when you get that in your industry right please 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 make an excel and write everything about the data like you can spend two days on this data as well okay like before doing anything first understand the data okay use python as well to do that analysis but you can do that before actually begin going into the data science of it okay because that is very important to understand this data is going to your i would say your bread and butter for the next two months okay please spend that time please try to understand please read more about that okay if this data you see is say from you us sub market us market okay then 
uh, what exactly happened and what all these things that should be done. Okay. Now, if you will see, we are uh, defining our x and y. So, x we are dropping the id because id idly doesn't have any case in this, and then the sales price. Sales price is your. So, if you remember, I have already told that how we define the data. So, your y becomes something which you have to predict or calculate by a machine learning model, and your x are all the other variables. Okay, we say them independent variables, and this is dependent variables. Okay, so this is what I am doing here. Everyone, uh, is all the things clear till now? What I have done. Can I get a quick yes if all things are clear? Great, everyone else. I hope everything is clear to each and every one of you. It is very important to understand everything which I'm discussing line by line. I already know these things. I'm doing this for your benefit. If you want me to explain any other thing, please don't be shy and ask that okay if any line is not clear or if you want to understand that sir why we are doing this it's very important to understand these things okay great if this is clear then i think we should be good to move forward the way we have defined x and y we can also define like this so i lock let me clear all these things uh sorry i missed uh, okay Keep on pressing the like the notes button instead of the eraser. But anyway. Uh, okay, it came there. It should be fine. Yeah. So what is happening is I can also define this X and Y in this way. I think you had an idea. Same thing, but different way. So I lock all till 1 to 81 and then minus 1. So if you would have done list indexing or something, basically you would know that how this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and also minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Okay. Divya is asking a very good question. How to know about each feature without domain expertise while practicing, sir? Divya, so the case which happen is that you will be getting this data from somewhere, right? In around 70 to 80 percent of the cases, the overall, I would say, key map or all the things basically for your particular data is provided to you. That okay, what exactly is happening? What exactly this particular key is having an idea? So two, I normally divide it into two parts. Okay, let me explain this as well quickly. Well, oh, this is a very important question. Okay, see what happened. The when like everyone also pay a very close attention. Once you get the data, in most cases you will get all the keys and everything that let's say what particular column means. Okay. Now, to get the domain expertise, if let's say you're getting the house pricing data, what I used to do personally, I will tell you, and that used to do wonders to me that, let's say tomorrow you're getting a pro problem in a similar domain, let's say office prices or house pricing only, okay? I used to basically go and see what all projects other people have done and their code as well, okay? As well as read a lot about the same thing that, okay, how the house prices, let's say in a particular area has affected so for example we know that in major cities in india for example uh post covid there have been around 13 to 15 percent of increase in the residential property okay so 13 to 50 percent increase from 19 to around 23 okay then similarly from us house market we know that how it was peaking peaking, peaking and then dropped a little bit around 2008 okay then similarly, it makes a lot of sense to first get an overall idea on the data that, okay, what is it and read about the same, okay, that say if this is the housing data which I'm dealing with, right, I will go on internet and read a lot about housing data, how it, how the purchases are done and everything, what are the different, I would say, uh, terminologies and jargon in the same, okay. So for example, it makes a lot of sense to understand that what role garage has to play, okay, let's say garage, what role it has to play. Then similarly, how many, like if particular area is there, okay, what kind of area is that? Okay, so first you get the domain expertise in that way where you are understanding everything about the same. So a very good example for this is let's say if I give you a food level data tomorrow, right? So you will go and understand now that okay, what exactly is the effect of your calories in the food? Okay, of added sugar. Then what are the different preservatives of normally written INS 05? This is the preservative added. Okay, 
So first, I think it makes a lot of sense to actually get into that thing and spend two to three days to understand the full industry. Okay, read a uh, lots of reports. Read, I would say, a lot of uh, overall uh, articles on the same to understand the same. Okay, for example, in a food data, to you will get to understand that if added sugar is very high, that food doesn't qualify as healthy. Okay, then normally let's say price point is there. Try to understand how this price is decided and all these things. So all this will help you in understanding overall. I would say the jargons, the industry, pretty better, because see, not each and every one of us cannot get all a full idea about any industry, right? So if today I am practicing and I get tomorrow a project which is the very first for the pharma industry, then I need to make sure that I am understanding that industry pretty well, because that only will transform into my data. Okay. So in the pharma industry, what I will do is I will see that okay, what is the different kind of trials which are done? What is the efficacy of a drug? How it is it defined? Okay. So you must have heard about drug efficacy. Something. Then what is your recall rate? How clinical trials are performed? Okay, all these things I will try to understand. Okay, dosage, everything that okay. How in extreme situation if that is added, then what is the case? Then comes the second part where I will now see that okay, if similar problems have already been solved, then how did that help? Uh, how the insights help with the data? For example. What I will do is I will now try to find someone who had done your EDA or basically who has tried to understand a lot on the house data set. Okay. You can maybe go to Kegel and see if a particular similar, I would say, information is present. Let me help you in the same only. So let's say house Kegel. So you see house prices. Okay. Then what I can do is I can go to code and I can see other people basically doing their stuff on the same, right? So if let's say yeah, there is one page house price EDA. I will actually do the same in real in industry experience also used to do the same where we are actually seeing other people's code and hopefully this was not in different language. Okay, sorry, my bad. I think my screen is not getting shared. Yeah. So what I've done is I went to Kegel and basically pick up a notebook where person has done out ED on the house prices and I will see what all kind of stuff he has done, right? What graphs he has made, what all he has done that I see that this is the correlation metric. Okay, this overall is your correlation metric which a person has made. And based on all these things, I should get a pretty overall idea that what all things even I can do on my data. Search screen is not visible, sir. Is it visible now, uh, Divya? I'm sorry, I'm just proving a point like nothing on the screen is as such important as of now. But yeah, what I'm saying is that once I understand the jargons and everything, I will see that how the similar problem previously have been solved. Okay, so person might be getting few details from that data, which may be also relevant to my detail. A very good example for the same is that if you have done a project on Zomato, right? A lot of those insights will of course be also active on Swiggy. Okay, so or let's say in any travel domain, right? So to make sure like this, I basically follow this two-step approach and after I would say a week, I have a very good idea that what all I have to do and then I get into EDA. Okay. So this step you have to do. Okay. There is no, I would say overall idea on the same that how you can basically make sure of that. One second, let me close this tab. Yeah. This step you have to do the way. Okay. I hope if each and everyone was clear on this. If you want to be a great data scientist, believe me, this thing, the uh, advice which I've shared with you that will be a lot helpful. Like no one shares these because many people might not have worked in the industry, but believe me, that is how it happens. Okay. You have to yourself basically spare, like, uh, I would say, spend the time to gain the expertise in the field. Okay. In the domain. Great. Uh, that was a pretty big detour, but anyway, let us come back to our data. This is your same way. The way these two lines are basically doing the same things. Uh, why am I doing this again? again, again. Sorry for that again. One second. Okay, so let me take the pencil here. Yeah. Okay, this is the this thing which I have to do. Yeah, so these two are the same only, so it should be fine. Then import train test split. Okay. Very easy code, I would say. Then test size we are putting at 0.1. Okay, we will try to explain a little bit on this as well. What happens is that we are given some data. Okay, and some data we have to test. Okay, test thing is there. So what we do is we divide our data into train and validation. You can say this as your test as well. So that's why I'm taking test. You can take validation as well. So whatever we are doing training on this, we will first test on our test data and then use that to test on the client's data or I would say the new data. Okay, so pretty easy. Train test split is basically a library in, uh, sorry, a 
function in your SK learn which you can use to just do your train test split. So we are training and splitting by 0.1. So 90% of our data will be trained. Okay. Great. Let us now see missing values. I will try to explain you the code. One second. Yeah. So features NAN. This is basically all the features where missing values are present. So feature for feature, this is a for loop. I hope you are aware of this uh, overall uh, syntax of writing the for loop in Python. In dataset dot column, so all the columns in my data sets, if data rate dot feature dot is null. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm taking one feature. So let's say if these were my features. I'm taking features one by one and checking if it has none, null values. If it has null values, I'm including that in data set null. Data set, sorry, features NA. Now, after that, what I'm doing, I'm running another loop for feature in feature NA. Feature is this. Okay, so this comes to your. Uh, overall feature thing and missing values is this percentage okay so missing value i will calculate by just dividing by everything okay let me run this thing see now we will get an idea on the same missing values how many are there and if you have to build so see ali basically is having 93 percent of values that's missing okay this has 99 percent so pool qc is having 99 percent okay if you remember idly we had a rule that let's say more than uh, 70 80 percent of values if there are okay we will be just removing that column altogether okay we won't be doing this here so there is very one very more important thing which i would like to stress here when doing eda when doing eda you just focus on getting the insights okay you don't change anything in your data till now you will share those insights you will make a report on that or basically you will make sure that you are writing those insights somewhere so it's not like that because I have now get it. I have, I know that all of us know the ways now. Mean, median, mod, k, n, and other ways are there. We will still not be doing do anything to calculate that. Okay. We are just doing our, I would say overall exploration of our data. That is exploratory data analysis. We will be doing and working on the features after and once we are make sure that, okay, this is happening. So for example, why is that the case? Let's say feature alley is missing at a 93% values, right? So maybe this data was wrongly inputted or you might there might be a way where you can fill this data or you can ask the client hey can you provide me these with these values if that's the case okay then it will make sense to first fill it instead of directly i would say uh like directly let's say imputing them by the ways which we know it's better if we can get them by a client or from the same source where we have got the data okay instead of just filling it and then feeling happy because 93 percent of missing value doesn't make sense if let's say out of 100 students, you have the score of seven students and you try to fill the scores of 93 students yourself, you will of course be a lot wrong. Okay. I hope this thing is clear to each and every one of you as well. Can I get a quick yes? Everyone can I get a yes if all, all the things till now is clear? Everyone else? Great. So let us now move forward. Then let us see for the categorical features as well. Okay. So one second, let me just show you all one more thing. If I do my data set dot info. Uh, yeah. So how many of you have an idea? Prithvi, what do you want me to repeat? Can you tell me what exactly you want me to repeat? <sighs> Meanwhile, I hope all of you are basically aware of the info function. Okay. Now what happened? Okay, Prithvi, let me repeat the missing value part. Great. See. What I'm saying is that we will be calculating missing values in our data now. Okay, this is the code which we have in front of you. So first I will calculate what are the features which are basically, so let's say A, B, C, D, these are my features. 
first what I will do is I will calculate that which feature missing values are present. Okay, so let's say in this case B and C are missing values. Okay, rest all the values are there. Okay, so now what is happening is what I'm doing is feature. I've been taking each feature one by one. This is the for loop. For that, if data set feature, okay, so how it will happen is first it will take A, then it will take B, then C, then D, is null dot sum. So I will get total missing values, right? If it is greater than equal to 1, you can also use greater than 0 here. So you will get B and C here, right? You will get all the columns where missing value is present. Now, once you have this thing, what you are doing is, now you are calculating the percentage of missing value, okay? So how you are doing this for feature in feature NAN? So you are just taking B and C now. What you are doing the feature is, so we first take the feature, that is just the feature name which are present here. And we calculate the missing value percentage. For example, here it is 1 divided by 4, which is 25%. So you will see that what how, how we have done is np.round data set feature dot is null dot mean. Okay. So this is just what I am using. Okay. And 4 is basically till your 4 uh, decimal places. Okay. So this is a syntax which gives me all the missing value percentage. So for B and C in the example, we would have got B, it is 25%. I guess 0.25 coming as 0.25. Maybe I have to divide by 100, uh, multiply by 100, and C also 25%. And the next thing which I said is that we won't be actually doing anything to compute or impute them as well. We are first just doing our analysis. Analysis again is very important. Then only can we basically move forward and say that, okay, this, this much is the missing value. So instead of just, I would say, uh, channelize your inner data science where you know all the things. Because that is something which has even happened to me where I used to do all these kind of a stuff to just showcase my skill. That never happens, believe me. You have to be make sure that you are working with respect to the business, okay? So here, if the 93% values are missing, first try to understand why they are missing, okay? Can you get that from the data source, from where you got the data? Those are better ways than to just going and applying your, I would say, library or anything to compute that. I hope, Prithvi, this was clear now. Great. Okay, Prithvi, no worries. So next, actually, I was moving and write a code. So dataset.info. So what happened is that it basically gives us all the info that what kind of variables each and every one is. So we know that, okay, ID, subclass, and all these are in 64 variables, but you will see objects as well. So here you are seeing int, float, the 64 is 64 bytes and everything, and as well as your object. So object generally we take that it is a categorical variable. Okay, let us check for the same as well. MS zoning is one. Okay. So MS zoning see it does seem like something which is having a categorical things, right? So this kind of stuff we have to do. Just one thing here, we might have to also calculate this RCF if let's say somewhere 1001 is present. Then Python might have treated this as your uh, numerical variable in 64 or float 64, but we will have to correct that. Okay. But meanwhile, what I'm doing, so I explained that so the next code is clear. So see, I'm getting for all the things. So you know, what I'm doing is I'm getting the categorical variables. So for features and features, if data set dot feature dot D type is equals equals to O. Okay, so O basically translate to your object. Okay, let us basically get this thing now. And let us see what are all the categorical features. See? MS zoning we are getting so last was sale condition. So we are getting sale condition as well. Is everyone clear on this thing? What I just explained that how we can get categorical variables. So how to just, I would say separate your categorical variables from your overall data. I hope this thing is clear each and every one of you. Give me a quick yes. If all is clear, I'm taking it pretty slow so that everything is clear. Great. Good to see few yeses. <clears throat> so now let us move forward. Uh, just one very important thing as you work on your data, always and always make copy of your data. This is very important if you're doing any analysis so that you don't make any changes in your main data. Okay. So all the analysis which you will be doing, you will be doing on making the copy first. Okay. And also we don't want one more thing which is 
So let's say this is your data. Okay. Say you have uh, changed something in this data. Okay. And make a copy. So let's say this is your data overall. Okay. In this, you have maybe changed your male and female. You have done the hot encoding. 0, 1, 0, 1, something like this. So we don't want that now we are working on the same data overall. Okay. Let's say any other thing, all the other things we are working on same data. No. If you were doing your analysis and everything, make sure, please make sure that you are doing these things by making the copy every time. So this is how you will work on categorical variable. This is how you will work on your numerical variables or let's say missing value because we don't want that. Let's say whatever you are doing here propagates to your other thing. Okay. This may overall lead to, I would say, few things which you don't want and that propagates to each of your analysis. Okay. This thing is very important to understand. One second. Let me clear it. Yeah. Great. So I have defined a replace categorical feature. So it is a function. Okay. We have defined a function here. What it does, it takes your data set and your categorical variables and data categorical variables, data fill NA. So I, what I'm doing is for all the NAs, I'm filling them with missing. Okay. So it is another very important and I would say use case where what we do is that in our categorical variable, let's say we have mailed. So let me explain you this pretty nicely. What we do is that let's say we have male, female, male, female, and few of them are missing. Okay. So let's say this is NAN. So NAN I basically translate into another, I would say uh, your category, which is missing over. Okay. So this is what I'm doing here as well. Okay. We already have our data, the copy one, we are not sending data set. We have our categorical variable. So we are doing this now. Okay. Define the function, replaced it. Then let us see the mod here. See? One second. Yeah. So we have replaced our categorical variable. And we are taking the mod. Just one thing which we have to do. I think this makes sense. And instead of data, let us take data here. Okay. So lot frontage. If we take here, let us see lot frontage. What is it? Okay, so this is what lot frontage is. And we are taking the mod to check that, okay, this is the value which is coming the highest time. Okay. So mean median mod also we similarly use by that way. Then what I'm doing next thing, I'm taking a copy again. Okay. And the main data set, as I said, I'm not uh, changing or anything. And I am basically this time filling everything with the mod. So for the categorical variable, if you remember mean, and median doesn't work, right? I hope each and every one of you remember this. Mean and median doesn't work. We have to work with mode here, right? So this time I'm trying to, it's very easy. Like I know you might have an idea that's why we are doing this with mode and everything. But we of always try with a simple thing and then go towards the, I would say the heavier or the, let's say more complex things. Okay. So in that way, what is the case is that we will be taking mode first and then we will see if you have to do KN and imputation and everything. But yeah. So similarly, this is the code and this majorly I have written so I can explain you on the same. Okay. So data, we have made the copy and now let us save this data where we are replace everything with its mode. Okay. So I hope each and everyone is clear with the same as well. Can I get a quick yes? If you understood how we fill the mode and everything in the categorical variables. Anyone else, if any issue is there? Great, I think it should be clear, pretty straightforward and easy code. So now let us understand this code as well. What we are doing here. So we did our uh, missing value analysis on your categorical data. Same we will be doing on numerical features. So here I'm calculating numerical features in an very easy code. What I'm doing feature for feature in data set dot column. If data set feature dot D type is not equal to zero or oh, sorry object. What we are left with in 64 float 64 which are ideally my numerical variables and 
data set feature is null dot sum is greater than equal to 1 i hope this thing is clear as well to each and every one of you so in this way we get the numerical features in an basically all the features in numerical who are having the value as who are having basically null values see these are the variables we can check the same as well let's say okay we might have to see the lot frontage here okay this will be a little difficult because the data is high but yeah these are all the variables where we are basically getting this thing okay i hope each and every one of you are clear with this thing and what we did there in the line 37 this line 37 how we calculated the numerical features in nan so this is actually the way you do your missing value analysis you won't be just taking your data and just compute every missing values okay first you'll understand where the missing value is and where it is not okay i hope each and everyone is clear i'm taking it pretty slow so that you understand actually how you'll be doing it in the industry okay great if because all of you are so smart can you also give me the code where i can i can actually plot the uh, your uh, box plot for this thing if we can plot the box plot so see plot See how we normally go and basically see the code. So what I'm doing, like I'm showing you this specifically that I have searched plot box plot Python for a column and pandas because we are dealing with pandas data frame. Okay. So that is how you have to basically go for the code and everything. Okay. It is very important that you know how exactly to search because this is what you will actually also be doing in your uh, real job and everything, okay? So, see, it's pretty easy. I have copied this code. And what I might be just required to now do is data set. Okay, I take this feature instead. And title outlier. See? Pretty easy, right? So I've just took up the code in front of you and just basically come up with this thing. What I've done, I will explain you again. First, I got all the features where NAN is present. Okay. I specifically intentionally left this code open so I can show that exactly how you do it. Like let's say when you will working in job, right? Even if you don't remember the code, just do a quick search and you should be good enough to use that and basically get to the values. Okay. Then just data set feature. So I run a loop. We have three features here we are seeing. Blo plot, kind is equal to box, title, we have outliers, and see. And we can do one more thing. Outlier in column feature. See. Outlier in column plot frontage. See, it is having a lot of outliers. I hope each and every one of you, this thing is clear. We took and understood outliers and everything in a lot of detail, right? Can I get a quick yes or no if everything is clear till now what I have done here? This should be pretty straightforward and like this is exactly how you should also do the same. My way of learning thing was different when comparing your lectures as I need to spend a minimum four to five days in business perspective and data while practicing also. I'm clear till now, sir. Yes, Devya. So I personally always suggest that if you're doing anything, make sure that you spend a lot of time in that. So let's say if you're taking any project, okay? I'm not sure how you used to do it. You can let me know how exactly you used to do it. But this was actually some mistake which I used to actually do in the earlier, I would say, in the early phases of my career where I was a lot focused on actually applying things, okay? Directly applying the things. Okay, which I know. But believe me, to work in a way that it transforms into something good for the business, it is easy to keep things simple and understand everything. Okay, now it is very easy for me to just, you know, write codes and basically make sure that I'm filling all the values in the best way possible. Okay, I'm using KNN imputer to get the missing values. Okay, 
but i think it makes very much like if you do that there is no issue you will be able to do your textbook projects the projects which even i am telling you that should be all done but the second you will go in the industry where you will actually be required to a project and you do the same believe me it won't be that helpful there is a reason that in projects in the industry take 2 to 2 months while we are able to do some projects here in 2 hours right so that difference is actually this time which one has to spend on let's say your data understanding on overall your building the business perspective understanding the business that is why it takes so much time okay so great you will see a lots of uh, outliers are there if outliers are there which uh, like i would say how can we come impute the missing value if outliers are there if lots of outliers are present which is the best measure to get to the missing values can anyone tell me what is the best way to now come up with the missing values if let's say i want to calculate this missing values which central tendency measure is i would say independent of outliers it doesn't have any effect on outlier okay let me make it easy should i choose mean or median to fill the outliers what it should be median thanks divya so i hope you know that why we might be going forward with the median because we have outliers okay pretty straight forward all this is have done the same if you will see here clearing all this see for feature in numerical features since there are outliers we are going to replace with median okay so these are all the median values for my feature and i am making a new feature as i said we are not going to make any change in our major main data set which we got okay so that thing is very important to make sure that you understand all these things now once you will be making this new feature that is where you will actually keep on changes these thing okay i hope each and every one of you is clear with this thing great so i'm making this new feature and i will show you also that how it basically looks after doing this we have fill in the median and see that is where i see these features right so lot frontage nan these were the three features which you were dealing with and now we have fill in all the values we have not done any changes into the main column because we don't want to basically make anything which tinker or changes our data okay then let us do this lot frontage is in a sum it will be zero right because we have filled in all the null values with your median okay i hope each and everyone is clear with this can i get a quick yes if everything is clear till now the missing are we doing changes in the copy set data set world so there are two ways what you can do it is there in the initial only you have data set okay you take this data create a copy every time you are doing anything or you make sure that in the data set column if you are even if you are doing it you don't change the columns as were given to you okay anything which you are adding please add others column okay i hope that thing is clear to each and every one of you as well i just want to make sure that my changes in this is minimum because if tomorrow i have to run this code again and everything and let's say if by mistake i saved this then i will have to get this file and everything again and again right i hope each and every one of you is clear with this thing as well great so now uh, temporal variables i think the way you were also asking on the same so data set time and everything all of these variable let us see few of the temporal variable where year will be there so year built year removed and then carriage year built these are the cases so what i am doing is i am calculating age of your house feature plus age of your house so year built age of your house age of house 
then ear remodified age of house okay so based on these thing i am calculating these ages okay so see once i have run this and i have run this as well if we will go to the very end see you are seeing the year built and every all of these things year built age of house so how old overall the house is 5317 year remodified so when the house was remodified okay so for example it was built 7 years ago and then 6 years ago it was remodified and garage year built okay when the garage was built and basically what is the information okay how should we treat data date time very features like day week number month and so uh, that actually is completely different uh, mohammed temporal variables as we are seeing we will be handling them like that okay i will actually take another example so that all this thing is also clear to you like i will take another data set where we will be dealing with a lots of temporal variables okay till now i hope everything is clear what all i have explained here can i get a quick yes or no great uh so yeah, if everything is clear uh so this is one of the data set where we have done it now let me actually move to another data set to explain you a little bit more on your let's say this temporal variables which you all are facing some issue right so this is actually one more very uh, flight price prediction is one more data sets okay which we can work with let me just collapse all the outputs okay this should work yeah great so if everything is clear then now let us move a little forward okay so this is now another data set we are done with a lots of ed on your flight price uh, sorry on your house that was majorly on the missing values if you would have seen right so now let us see on the flight price prediction and here you would be dealing with lots of temporal variables okay so see this is your all the libraries the way we import them then let us see the data train and the head of it okay so see what this data is dealing with it has your airline date of journey source i think that is basically from where it flew then destination so it went to bangalore to new delhi then route it take departure time arrival time duration okay that is how it departure so these are not your categorical as well as your numerical variables what they are they are your overall temporal variables we deal with time and everything okay so let me show this data from here as well okay it is not utf5 encoded no worries is there open with editor okay it is okay it is excel sx not csv uh we should be able to how we can see the csv that should be fine okay i can show you the data on excel okay just give me a second yeah just a lot zoomed out see this is all the data okay i hope all of you are able to see the same so we are moving to the new data uh, because you are facing some issue with temporal variables we will see how temporal variables can be handled as well okay nice so this is the airline kind of seems like a categorical variable to me this is your date of journey right over your date of journey then your source your destination okay then your route so how it is going then your departure time and arrival time duration total stops how many stops were there and any other additional info and the price seems like a very easy to understand data set right is everyone clear in what data exactly is what exactly your data set is great so now let us move forward once we have understood the data and here are lots of 
temporal variables are there, right? Great. So we have seen the data here as well. Let me just close this. Similarly, we have the test data set as well, but right now we are not, I would say, dealing with your overall uh, ML model or something. So we are just joining both the data sets. So final DF, you will see that we are aligning both the data sets, okay? So let us few things on the data now. Data from object has no thing append. Okay, I think it is not loaded properly. Test DF is loaded, train DF is loaded. Is there something known as concatenate? Okay, so if we face error like this, we normally just search for the errors and let us see what is happening. So as of Panda student append has been depreciated, that's why the code is not getting used. So I was using the concat, that seems right. Concat. Okay, it is showing that data frame doesn't have concat as well. Okay, let us quickly see what can be done then. So it is kind of explaining that why everything was removed. So it's the code. If let's say we use previous version of pandas, that should be fine. Okay. So issues like this can actually happen. But yeah, we have to make sure that uh, we are able to basically uh, understand everything. So there is one more thing. What we can do is append. See, it worked now. Right. So just function has been basically upgraded in the newer version. So we just have to see and uh, basically make sure that we are able to come up with this. I personally believe to not remember any code. That thing is present on the internet. What you as a data scientist is to be done is basically make sure that you have to do is that you have to basically understand each and everything. Okay. On the data and everything code and all you should be, you will be able to write after you do a few projects. Okay. Please don't remember the code. It is available on net. That should all be fine. If you don't know, for example, right now append has been depreciated and underscore append is present. It doesn't cause an issue. No one will be pretty sure that no one will be rejecting you on this thing in the interview. Because see, the main aim is that you want that you have to join these data sets. Okay. That is what the main aim is. Right. Let me, let me know if any comments are there. Let me take up. Okay. Whether EDA should be performed before train test split or after train test split, sir, we need to understand whole data. EDA, Divya, ideally should be performed on your whole data. Okay, so that whole data is there. You can basically make sure that every of your data, you are able to come up with that. If test data doesn't have target, should we still concatenate with training data? Yes, Mohammed. So the case is that, see, how I normally do this is that, let's say, this is your data where you are doing something, right? This is all your data where you are doing something. Uh, I'm talking about the EDA modeling and everything will be just done on train. Okay. So let's say if you do a few things here. Okay. If you are understanding and doing few things here. Okay. Then the same you will have to do here on this data. Okay. Let's say anything which you are doing. Same you have to do there. Then you will be sending this to your model. Okay. So that you understand the same. Now, ideally, just one thing. We don't do the EDA on the full uh, train plus test data. Here I have concatenated because data was pretty low. And to understand this, because we don't want that, we don't want to see our test data before. Okay, that thing is, of course, always there. So, all the fit and everything we'll be doing on our train data only. Here, I've concatenated it because I will be, I just want to show you these things. Okay. But once you make sure that, let's say, these are the steps which you have to perform on your EDA, on your train data, then the same you will be performing on your test data. But all the training and everything, all the decisions will be taken via this data only. Okay. Here I've concatenated it because we have less data. So I want to just make sure that you are working on the full data. That should be fine. But otherwise, you have to always work on your train data only. And all the steps of transformation which you're doing on your train data, you have to do on your test data as well. I will give you an example of this as well. So I was once working with the text data. Okay. So in text, you know that, okay, something like, yes. Okay. Something like this is written. So we normally just remove these top words, these punctuation and everything. Now I then train my model. Okay, so this is let's say my machine learning model. So we have to make sure that we are doing the same thing on our test data. Okay, so let's say the yes, okay is written. Then I'm removing this the and everything so that my model gets the same kind of data. But you should not train your model on this test data. Okay, or you should not basically do any make any EDA things on your test data, like EDA decision based on your test data. Okay. But all the EDA which you will be doing on your train data, like, uh, sorry, all the changes which you finalized 
uh, which you will be doing on your train data that has to be done on your test data as well. Then only your model will basically perform on the expected way, right? It is not that training to you have done with a very clean data, all the everything is basically finalized and everything. Okay, everything is standardized, everything is basically normalized. But for test, you are not cleaning or you are not normalizing the data, right? So that thing has to be done, but all the decision you will be taking on the basis of that data only, okay? I hope each and every one, is, one of you is clear with the same. Great, so just seeing few values, tail is there, 2670, then info. Let us see on the info, we see that most of them are object, right? And the price is just this thing. So, see, now here is the date of journey, where is date of journey, see. Now, just understand with me what is happening. So, this is 27, 329, what is it? DD, MM, ER, ER, right? How I can break this? If I break this on this slash, right i will get these things right date then month then year right all this thing will be clear to me so i'm doing the same thing so in the temporal variables you have to deal it in a different way where you have to get all these values out so you will see what i'm doing here okay see what's happening here and how, what exactly i'm doing exactly so if I split on this thing, on this thing, if I'm splitting, I'm getting all these date, month and everything. Now I'm creating a new variable, which is your date, your second variable, which is your month and your third variable, which is your year. So based on this thing, overall, your model will be able to understand a lot of things. Earlier when the date was written, it was not getting the, those all values, right? So this is something which you won't be getting to, nowhere will be taught, but in the case study in your projects, only you will be getting to understand this, right? So see now this is what I'm doing here. In the final and see the question which people have, right? So it is not the case that in my test data, so I train data, I will make these dates, I will make these months or I will make these years. But in the train data, test data, I will just send by like this only 27, 3, 19, right? I will be dividing and basically doing all these things on my test data as well. So my model gets that value instead, okay? So what I have done, date, date of journey, string split and string of zero. Why string of zero? Because see, this is where my date lies. This is where my month lies, one, and this is where my year lies. Okay? See? Uh, one second, yeah. See? So I'm able to now see date, month, and year. If every, everyone clear with this thing, what we have done here? Can I get a quick yes or no? Everyone else, I hope this thing is clear. Again, very important to deal, how to deal with temporal variables. Not taught at a lot of places, but you deal with them in your real data for sure. Like everything has a date and time and everything attached to it, right? Great. So I hope you are enjoying the way basically I'm teaching you with explaining everything. Okay. Please make sure that you remember all these things. And when you will be doing your practicals or let's say your case study or real life project, you understand and remember all these things. Okay. This is another way to do the same. I hope you know the apply and lambda syntax, right? So x lambda, we basically we are writing a lambda function x dot x split basically. So same way to do the same. Okay. Okay, I think it's not df one second. What I have to do, I can actually just do simple thing. df is equals to let's say our final df. Now it should be fine. Okay. Then I've changed all this as type int. Okay. So they were coming out. Let us see what is the object, uh, basically what is the type which we are getting. So df.info. So I'm getting in 64. Let me change it to int and let us see the final df intro. Okay. 
everything is fine there i hope uh yes mohammed i will be sharing each and everything with you what i'm using in the class okay that should not be the concern i think till now also i've shared everything like the ppts which i made the codes which i used earlier to explain you things so that i know that once you will be revising them from there that becomes very useful okay so no worries on that everything will be uh, present in the resource section okay nice so if now this is done i think we are good to not drop the date of journey right because we have extracted everything from this we have extracted the date the month the year then date date of journey can idly be dropped right let us drop them i hope each and every one you clear with this thing divya just practice practice a lot that is the best way to be good with pandas and numpy like honestly even i have done a lot of practice so i am i am able to do stuff okay because i know that okay what i have to do and how pandas numpy kind of works okay it is not that i remember each and every one of the code and to be honest i don't even want to remember any code okay it is not i i tried that in the starting when like i would say during the initial two years of my data science journey i used to just remember the code and feel that i know everything no that is not the case you should have an idea that what you want to do and you should basically then come up with the solution the reason being that you will not be getting similar problems okay you will not be getting similar problems in real life you will be getting always you will be getting your change or i would say different problems altogether and then it makes a lot of sense to i would say have a case where you are able to come up with the code all in the spot or let's say by referring to some material but that will also happen when you do lots of practice okay so what i will suggest you to do take this data when i will share this with you okay make sure you are understanding this data then work a lot around this data okay if i have divided so i have shown you two way lambda function as well as split right use this data and see write five more ways the way you can do it okay see on internet that okay how you can divide the date to get the uh, let's say particular month and year from that is there any other way then for month how you can change that all this thing is to be done divya there is no shortcut to that and even if there is i won't suggest you that like the shortcut will also limit your thinking and make you think that okay this thing can be done easily and all these thing i want you to actually spend that time okay because if you do that your industry like the when you will actually be doing your job that will be lot easy okay great so now the way we basically divided our date i think we can also see the time time can be divided on this colon right so all this i am doing to explain each and every one of you about temporal variables okay this is something which we didn't cover in our theory but of course they come a lot so i actually intended to cover this all in your case study as well we will see a complete case study also tomorrow that should all be fine but yeah this is your overall temporal variable okay so do you want a complete case study as well where we are uh, handling all the different variables univariate analysis bivariate analysis let me know in the comments and now how we are doing this is if you see arrival time we are splitting it okay so let us see what will happen here see this is the case i don't care with the i would say particular date that should not be an issue with me as long as i have the time the reason is that i already have the duration so that all should be fine but i am able to basically first divide it uh, on this date and then if i divide the first one so see if i divide the 0th one okay so see what i have done here this let us take this example okay so 10 25 13 march i divided on this thing so this my this becomes into three parts now if i take the first part and i divide it on the basis of this colon i will get the hours and minutes right i hope everything each and every one of you is clear with this thing so see how it is happening one second see right i got the time let me clear everything i got the time here now 
if I get the arrival time, I'm applying the lambda function. I just got the time. If I get to get the arrival r in min minute, right? So this is the time. R is 0, 1, minute is 10. That I get by splitting on this colon. Okay. So see, I'm splitting on this colon. So understand the EC time very nicely. This is your arrival time. This is your arrival minute R. This is your arrival minute. So arrival R, arrival minute. Split on this thing and then taking 0 and 1. Okay. So let me quickly just go forward with this thing now. So doing this on the arrival R and basically for all the R column and we can then of course drop the arrival time, right? Yes, they were sure will do that. Should be fine. So see, final DF at 5. And then just doing it for the departure R in minute. I hope this thing all should be very clear as well. What I'm doing here for your departure R, departure minute and everything. Okay. Departure R, departure minute and everything. Right. So getting this thing clear. Now let us get the info. See. Let us get a head as well of this. Better if I do like this, yeah. See, I have a lot of extra variables which I have included now, right? Then total stops. Okay, so if I do unique dot counts, I think it is unique dot count something. Okay, so I think it won't work on unique. Yeah, that should be fine. So here, if you see. This is your categorical variable. Stops are your categorical, right? It can be one, two, three, or no, no stops are there in a flight. So people who might not be aware what happened, let's say if I am flying from, let's say, A to B, either my flight can direct go or it can first go to C and then go to this, right? It is a lot common in places. So for example, if you are going, say, around uh, somewhere in Europe or US, then there is normally a stop in Dubai, right? Where basically few people get down, few people then join you, maybe it is doing some, uh, I would say, overall uh, replenishment of resources and everything, but that is the case where it happens a lot, okay? So, your non-stop, two-stop, one-stop, three-stop, four-stops, and NANs are also there, okay? So, let us change these variables into our this thing. <laughs> so, understand one more thing here, okay? Your, this, uh, non-stop is 0, 2-stop is 2, 1-stop is 1, right? I can change like this. Hopefully, I hope everyone is clear on this. So, this is what I am doing here. Non-stop 0, 1-stop 1, 2-stop 1, 2, 3-stop 3, 4-stop three, three, and NAN I am also basically taking as 1 only because I think that is the majority. We can take it as 0 as well, okay? So, now is null should be 1 value only, okay? Total stops. NAN, okay? Yeah, okay, no, it is not one stop. And let me see the total stops here. Yeah, so I have a lots of total stops still. This NAN I have actually changed, so it has the values as well. Okay, this NAN was a different category altogether, like this was actually missed, and NAN and NAN is basically just treated differently. Okay, so I see if you this are there. So we'll see how we can handle it, but meanwhile, let us drop the root, I think, now. Because this root information we already have now in our stops and everything, right? So root just tell you that, okay, how many stops it is taking, right? So I'm dropping this root. We can maybe also see that if it can be required or not. But yeah. See? So I got the total stops and everything for the NAND part. And I'm just seeing that, okay, what all is happening here. Then additional info, similarly, I will do this thing. This also seems to be your overall kind of a categorical only that it is no info, in-flight meal not included, no check-in baggage included, short layover, no info. Around 9, 10 uh, basically ways are there. So it's better if we treat this as categorical. So this actually I'm doing with a very, the way it is done in the industry. Of course, you can do a lot of complicated Python and everything on that. But I hope you are understanding that what exactly is ha happening here, right? Everyone can I get a yes or no if this is clear till now what all I have explained.
Great. So now let us move forward. Let us get this info again. Let us also see the next column which we will be working on. This is the duration R. Okay. So duration R dot head. Let us see this thing. What is this exactly? Okay. I think I have one second. Okay. It is not duration R. What is the exact variable? It is duration. R. My bad. See. So it is like this. 2 hour 50 minutes. What we will be doing here now? I hope everyone got an idea. How we will be getting the minutes and hour from this? On what we will be actually dividing it? Can I get an answer in the comments? To get now the hours and minutes. What will be the code if anyone can provide me that? We have seen a lot of this thing now. Everyone, can I get a yes or no? Like, sorry, can I get a code how we can divide it or just a character on which we will divide to get our hours and months or sorry, hours and minutes? This should be pretty straightforward, I think. Let me ask like this. I think this is better. Should I use this colon? Uh, so let us use, let me like this empty space is basically underscore or comma. What should I use to split it on? What should be the case? Out of three, what all should I use? Split. Uh, Mohammed, there should be one thing now which you are splitting as well. What we will be splitting this on? Yeah, the way that is right. It is empty space. Okay. So that is what I have done here. If you will see. Duration, string split this thing, string 0, then string split R and string 0. Okay. So what this gave me now, let us just quickly have an idea on this. See, it gave me the exact hours. I have also split on. So once I got this 15 R from here, this is after splitting on your empty space. I also split it on this R. Okay. And I'll choose the zeroth from it. Okay, so I got this value. So that is what I have done here. Similarly, we will be doing the same for your minute, right? Let us write the code for that as well. So duration minute string split one and then see. Let us see, let us actually see this in down below. Minute. See, I got the minute as well, right? I hope this works each and every one of you. We see that it is nan are also there. So the reason nan are there is 19 hours is there. So what we can do is we can change NA and here the nans basically which we are. So see, because it was 19 hours, I didn't get the minute part. And you can see the same that in second. So let us try to do this. Yeah, see in second it is transforming to your NAN. Okay, so what I can do, I can change this NA to zero as well, right? I hope each and every one if you get this thing. So dot fill na. This is the code. One second. So see again fill na in Python with zero. Okay. So sorry, my bad. I have to just write zero here. Yeah. This should now work, right? See, easy code, right? Just fill na zero. I thought it has to return after that, but yeah. Overall, this thing is fine, right? Can I get a yes and no, everyone? If this thing is clear to each and every one of you. So I hope overall now you get an idea on the temporal variables part, how temporal variables can be handled. This had a lot of temporal variables which we handled and how can we extract those information from that, right? This should be pretty clear now, right? Can I get a yes or no?
Okay, great. So now actually, yeah, we also saw that few of the flights, five minutes was the duration. Of course, that's not the right part. Like, I don't think Air India can make you travel from Mumbai to Hyderabad in five minutes. Okay, how you will get to know the same is that. Second. So we might have to see the final duration R. Okay. Which was the row? See, so if we basically move forward with our, let's say, are you going to build this model on this data? No, Mohammed. Like, I can do that in the complete case study, but the thing is that model building is pretty easy, right? Once you have your data cleared and everything, and this class, like this community class, overall was uh, dealing with your data science. Can do that on the complete case study, can do that on this as well. Should be pretty straightforward and easy. But right now, I won't be doing that because I don't want to teach you about modeling as of now. I did that when we did the uh, case community class on your uh, machine learning, right? And normally, if you would have uh, done few case study or something, you will know that applying model is pretty straightforward. Rather, I would actually like you to give this as a, uh, I would say, work where you are applying models onto this and seeing, let's say, the result before EDA. Sorry, before EDA feature engineering and all this, and your after EDA, after your feature engineering and all this. Right now, I want to make sure that you understand these very well because you will be dealing with this a lot. Okay. So similarly, we saw that somewhere the information was wrong only. So it makes sense to basically drop them thing, drop these things. Okay. So we can also do one thing: uh, filter rows where it contains a string in pandas okay so let's see what i'm doing and what i'm searching why i'm doing this thing okay containing a string pattern from pandas okay so contain is the function not string c how how i will use it to get all these variables okay when was this then final da dot your duration underscore r dot string dot contains m okay i think we missed something here what we have missed okay makes sense yeah one second oh sorry my bad this is what i missed duration or should be defined either okay my bad again See, okay, okay, one second. Then what we can do because this is two and false final df. It is saying unmatch. Okay, I am making this many mistakes. Should be fine. See, so I will explain what I have done here again. Yeah, they were like I messed up the column, but see, this gave me true and false here. Okay, and what I did was I just basically passed all these array of true and false to get the value where it is true and you and i contain that it contains m okay so on that way i was able to check maybe similar thing we can do for your so let's say final df we made duration minutes i think right so duration minutes and let's say it contain h okay i think okay it has any and so we might have to deal with them but should be fine So let us see for duration R only. So once we saw that, okay, five minutes is there, then of course this is a mistake, right? Now this thing is a mistake. Now see, here it was no NA and no missing values, no outliers, nothing, but the value overall is wrong, right? Data is wrong. So this kind of condition you also basically get in your real life scenarios, okay, in the real life data. So what you will do, we will just drop it and basically in place, just make sure that our data is free of these things because I hope you all are clear why this is wrong, right? Mumbai to Hyderabad, Mumbai to Hyderabad. We cannot calculate by this. What I have done personally, well, another thing what I have done personally in this data is, I would have calculated, seen all the Mumbai to Hyderabad flights, where the stop is 0, okay, or let's say stop is 1, and then try to basically fill that with this value. Do you think this is a good idea? What I am saying is that I would have seen that how Mumbai and Hyderabad, basically all the other flights in this data, and one more thing, I will be just doing this with respect to this data only, okay? 
not from outside as of now because I have the data present with me. So Mumbai to Hyderabad, I will see the distance for flight where the stops are zero and everything. Okay, and then fill in this value. And let's say maybe I would have then applied other filter as well. Like let's say in 2019 only. Okay, because if let's say some data from 1980 is present where it used to take five hours, that kind of is irrelevant to me. Now, these are few of the decisions which you have to take and that actually are based on your business understanding. Okay. I hope everyone have clear that the way I would have handled this. Let me know if any other way which you have handled this. Like when you got this project or when you got this data. So right now I'm removing this, but yeah. Similarly, I'm changing this thing now. Uh, this uh, duration that I'm changing to your uh, tie int. Okay, we can do the same for duration minute as well. Now dropping the duration column, it doesn't uh, use like no head case, no use cases there. This is one of the like how our data seems now. Okay, and let's see airline unique airlines are there. Okay. So airlines, I hope you all understand it is a D type object. It is a categorical variable. Okay, and no airline. So in this airline, we don't have any ordering, right? So in this airline, we cannot say that one is greater than another. I hope you all understand the same. Or uh, Shalmani, so what we do is that for hours and minutes, you can do that. Like we know that five hours, let's say fifth hour is greater than zeroth minute. So what our model, it might not understand that say uh, it is zero or it is let's say 23rd hour, but it know that, okay, this is basically moving on to that. Okay, so it is, it's better if you convert this to int only. Okay. I have covered a lot of cases and would have explained that in the uh, previous basically code as well, but yeah, it makes sense to do that. So now pretty straightforward code now. I think all of you remember. So instead of changing this by 0, 1, 2, I told you the concept of male, female, I hope in the initial starting, right? So see what we will be doing now. Okay, here we are just fit transform on all the type of basically your uh, I will explain what I have done here. So from scale and pre-processing we got the label encoder. We fit transform on a labeled encoder for all the basically all of your categorical variables. Okay, so that is how we deal with categorical variables. So we fit transform on this data. So what I have done is airline. Now this code it would have understood that okay what exactly is happening with the airline. Okay, and we will see the same. See, it has changed them into 3131 one, like this, source 0, 03. Okay, all of this has been done, right? So let us see this variable as well. See, 0313, three, all these kind of things is happening, right? Uh, one second. I think this is one hot encoder which we have to use. So one hot ESK learn, we have to just import it. So what I might have to do here is the code basically why it is giving error. Just let me quickly see. So from sklearn dot preprocessing import one hot encoder as OHE. Okay. It want your X as well. So let us give it your X as well. I think it will be final DF. Fit okay. I think you can see the same that should be fine but meanwhile let me just see that okay how we can use this one not encoder that should be fine okay this is pg dot dummies okay this is another uh, value how we can use the same so pg dot get dummies actually help us with the same so source one source two true false like zero and one it is giving right so airline also either you can use one hot encoder okay or what you can do is you can use pg dot get dummies. So in get dummies, it is doing the same thing. See. So quickly, let us see that. Okay, how many airlines we had? Eleven airlines. So see, for eleven airlines, false, 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 right? Then source two, source one, source three, like this, it is doing. Then destination one, destination two, like this, it is all doing everything. Okay. Everyone, I hope this thing is clear. This is the same thing which I explained you for male and female, right? 
so zero one it is basically dividing it into gender one gender two and similarly just doing true false true false right i hope each, each and every one of you is clear on this this is a very detailed case study on temporal variables so now you should never face an issue with handling the temporal variables i have covered most of them right please let me know if any doubts are there so we also do have a like case study which we which i covered in your ml thing as well but i can try to find another case study as well so let me know on that as well ki what exactly you want me to cover on the case study but here we will see different uh, things right so this is your p processing where we are making lots of graph then this is your eda okay so you will be doing univariate analysis and bivariate analysis to get the things but first let me know that if this thing is clear what all i have explained in the two data sets today so we took one the house data set we saw that how to handle the missing values and what all we have to do and the flight data set this was majorly done to explain you everything on the temporal side right so let me know if everything is clear if all things are clear and everything what all is there anything which i you want me to explain again while filling data for missing value we need to get data within the data set or with domain expertise uh they were like it depends if we can actually get uh we have to understand and discuss that with the client and everything you can get that from outside as well let's say from outside is present for example in the mumbai hyderabad case like the flights were there right maybe if let's say mumbai hyderabad flight data is not present like let's say the case is where or your flight where your source is mumbai and destination is hyderabad it is not present okay in all your this data then instead of dropping it what you can do is that you can make sure that you are getting this data from the internet okay and filling it but one thing is very important to understand here that we will have to run, like connect and basically uh, i would say communicate this to our stakeholders okay so who are as given with your data if it, let's say it's a client project or let's say if it's a project in your company we will have to make sure that we are writing that okay this is from where we are getting the data okay so the source is there okay it is not the case that you cannot get the data from outside it might be required to get from outside the first way will of course be that if you can get that within the data and everything but you can get that from outside but you have to make sure that that has been well communicated because else you can take data from anywhere the resource resources or the source might not be i would say verified and that will make given overall problem okay so everyone let me know if everything is clear uh, i think we are on time yes it's 1258 so we will be doing a case study tomorrow where we will be seeing other thing as well so in that what all steps we will be doing is we will be getting the data okay doing your p processing then your eda and everything along with that feature engineering and then finally maybe we can apply the models as well to see that okay what is the final benefit and results which we are getting okay so can do that as well uh, tomorrow that should all be fine okay give me a quick yes or no if everything is clear if any doubts are there please feel to ask them and please make sure that you uh, basically enroll in the course on nine neuron website so that everything is clear there okay like you are able to get the certificate for this course as well okay Thanks, Divya. Thank you, Mohammed. Thanks, Minal. Yeah. Uh, Divya, big data is a very big field. Uh, you will, you need to have a lots of concept clear. Uh, we'll see if that is required, but I think should be fine. First, get the understanding on this data. This just gets transformed in there. So, for the timing, I will suggest that understand this thing properly. Big data, you have to learn a few of other things: Hadoop, Spark, Kafka. Then how to handle then? Uh, I would say streaming data. okay how to make sure that you are able to catch all the data and nothing is getting missed so all this thing is there okay 
So big data thing we'll discuss further afterwards. Uh, we will also have a case where maybe I will try and see if I can take a community class for big data, but won't not committing. First, I think we have few cover things which we have to cover in data science, statistics, and all these parts. So first we will cover on that. Okay. Then we will see. So data big data also, maybe two, three months down the line. Maybe I can see and check if I can take that up. And basically, yeah, we should be good for the same. Okay. Great. If anyone has no other doubts, uh, I think it's uh, we can drop. It's uh, thanks a lot for your attention, everyone. Okay. Please go through the code and everything. I will provide all the resources. In the resource section, you will be able to get them. Okay. So thanks a lot for your time, everyone. It was really great. We did some good projects and everything. Like if you understand this, it will be a very smooth sail in your industry projects. Great. Uh, let me end the stream. Thanks a lot, everyone.